Protecting children from sexual abuse is not just a legal obligation. It is a moral imperative and a fundamental human right. Hello and welcome to our brand new episode of Adolescence Unfiltered. This podcast is brought to you by the Health and Family Welfare Department, Mikhalia. I am your host, Evangeline. And with me today, I have one expert guest. Uh, Ma'am, if you would just please introduce yourself to our viewers and listeners. Uh, I'm Dr. Shoiba Saldana. I'm a gynecologist. Uh, I also work in child protection and I work specifically with cases of POXO. All right. So, ma'am, judging by your background, I hope the audience uh, have a clear insight on what this episode is going to uh, going to be on. Uh, it's going to be on POXO. Before we start with the show, I would just like us to watch the interview, get a clear insight of what the students actually know about POXO and what questions they would like to ask you. POXO, no, I didn't. No, I haven't. So no, I'm sorry, I haven't heard of it. No. <clears throat> no. Yes, I have. Yeah. Yes, I have heard. No. Um, no. Protection of children from sexual assault. Protection of children against sexual offenses. Is it? Okay. Protection of children from sexual offense. Yes, it was um, enacted in 2012 or 2012 by the Indian government and I was surprised actually that it was only like, yes, so recently because I would expect something like the well-being of the children to be, to have been established long, long before. Oh, actually, we have value education classes. From school, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they teach. No, I saw it, I was reading about it in the news. Recently, yeah. Okay, uh, I think it's, it is important to talk about uh, boxes that people are aware that you know uh, there are these um, acts which are there to protect children against such uh, crimes and all. Of course, may maybe if people don't know and, and maybe if the child, the teenagers or whoever is getting harassed also don't know, then they might not feel that they have a window that they can use to actually use their rights against the. Harasser. People who are under the age of, uh, is it 12? So I think so, like America, there's an app where people can just click on one click of a button. They can just call nearest volunteers who can volunteer and they'll get to the help to, the, to give help to the person. Self-defense. Yeah, because uh, when I was in class 12, uh, uh, my school hired a, a, a black belt a taekwondo like, and he taught us self-defense. Uh, maybe re regarding the details of the act, maybe we can talk about that so that people are 100% aware of uh, what, what comes under the law. Yeah. So ma'am, I think you've gotten a gist of what the current scenario is when it comes yes. to teenagers, when it comes uh, about the knowledge on POXO and not a lot of them have an insight, or not even, forget about insight, they haven't even heard of the word POXO before. So for those viewers and listeners out there who haven't heard of the word, what is POXO? So, um, you know, I'm really delighted <coughs> that there are certain, some of the students yeah. said their schools have taught them about yeah. POXO and mm. safety because yeah. I think uh, learning about sexuality and learning to protect yourself from yeah. child sexual abuse mm. is a human rights issue. Yeah. So value education, taking it up is great. Yeah. So POXO is actually protection of children from sexual offences. Yeah. The act was uh, enacted in 2012 yeah. by the government of India. And um, yeah, it's what we're all following across the country. All right. So ma'am, why did the act come about? So the main reason the act came about and as one of the, uh, you know, young yeah. students mentioned that yeah. why did it take so much time, yeah. you know, and uh, earlier under the Indian Penal Code, yeah. we used to have 375, 376, 377 sections. Yeah. So those only talked of rape and sodomy. Yeah. And like we all know, mm -hmm. the sexual abuse has a huge, vast, vast continuum mm -hmm. of act. Like, I think most girls and many boys mm -hmm. have faced sexual assault in a bus, yeah. molestation, hmm. and a lot of these are not rape or sodomy, yeah. right? There are many, many areas, but there was nothing in the law about it. Yeah. 
And the only other law was uh, Section 354, which spoke about uh, outraging modesty of a woman hmm. and nothing about boys. Yeah. Right? So, like, for example, in schools, we have cases where some of the older boys harass the younger boys in the toilet hmm. or they may throw a ball against the other boys' uh, genitals. Hmm. So, you know, causing harm. So, these are all levels of sexual harassment. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, both parents, teachers, they say, it's okay, it's just boys hmm. or, you know, these are things you have to manage. Hmm. The moment we don't have zero tolerance, yeah. it gives the option to go further. Yeah. So, I mean, all of us must have faced it in public transport, yeah. like being in buses, yeah. being pinched or pushed or touched in an inappropriate manner. Mm -hmm. And if we had taken action at that point, yeah. the person wouldn't have had the confidence to go further to commit rape. Yeah. But because they realize that the society is such that if someone complains, a child mm -hmm. complains, a boy or a girl, the chances are they are so harassed mm -hmm. by the whole system yeah. that they aren't able to report. So they will escape mm -hmm. the... A punishment for their crime. Yeah. What What is the primary age that you know under the Poxo has uh, you know mentioned that the Act protects? So the Act protects everybody who is a child, mm -hmm. and under the International Convention for the Rights of Children, mm -hmm. the uh, age is 18 years. Right. So below 18 years, a child, a person is presumed to be a child, mm -hmm. and therefore they are not able to give informed consent. Okay. And so. While this creates a little con confusion, confusion about consensuality, yeah. it also protects children mm. who are not really aware of what's happening to them. So what, what are the punishment that falls under, what kinds of punishment are given to the perpetrator if they were, you know, they, they are the harasser or what are the kinds of... So what POXO did actually mm. was try to break it up, starting yeah. from, uh, of course, yes. rape, sodomy yeah. and things like gang rape. Mm. If a girl becomes pregnant or yeah. a child has, uh, gets HIV mm. or even things like if a person goes into severe depression okay. or, you know, drops out of school, you mm -hmm. must have heard of children yeah. who have been sexually abused. They stop going to school, yeah. they, they are not able to study, they are not able mm. to concentrate because of what's happening to them. Yeah. So with the result is that if any of these happen, we consider it as severe sexual assault. Mm. And so therefore, these have a high punishment, like yeah. something like 10 years to life. All right. And then there is a gradation, like suppose mm. somebody touches, watches a child disrobing yeah. or, you know, tries to take the clothes of a child mm -hmm. or touch them. Mm. Non-penetrative sex, but also touching and molesting yeah. has, you know, say five to seven years or three to five years punishment. Okay. What POXO has also very beautifully done is also looked at words. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a case uh, in one of the schools I was uh, called to where yeah. the principal was showing pornographic pictures to the children okay. and making very sexually loaded comments. Mm -hmm. This was deeply disturbing to children because whom do they complain to if your principal yeah. behaves like that, right? Yeah. Or a teacher or someone who's an elder in your family is mm. showing you things like this yeah. and, you know, misbehaving but not touching. Mm. So those are non-contact sexual assault also. So yeah. those also have punishment. Okay. Um, taking photographs of children uh, in positions or without clothes against mm. their wishes, mm. against their consent is also considered sexual assault. Yeah. Even if it is with consent, I don't think a child below the age of 18 is capable of deciding that or, you know. So that's where the issue of POXO comes yeah. in because uh, because of the social media, mm. because of the uh, easy availability of pornography everywhere, yeah. children are seeing a lot of sexual, mm. uh, you know, material. Mm. And as you said, they don't know. Consent means informed consent. That means yeah. I consent to something which I understand the consequences yeah. of, yeah. right? But if a person is romanced or something like that mm. and they end up having sex, mm. that's not actually consent because mm. consent means I should understand yeah. what are the consequences. Yeah. I don't know them. And at that point of time, when this happens and they may become pregnant mm. or anything, it's considered a problem. Yeah. Unfortunately, with POXO law, they said there is no consent possible below 18. Yeah. Now, we know that so many children are in consensual sexual activity yeah. even when they are younger, yeah. 16, 17 mm -hmm. and things like that. So there an issue comes in where they are scared to come. Like for example, yeah. one of the students spoke about teenage pregnancy. Yeah. Now the girl may have been in a relationship with a boy which is romantic. Mm -hmm. She probably didn't intend to have sex and yeah. definitely did not intend to become pregnant. But unfortunately, because of the emotions taking over yeah. your thoughts and brains, she ended up having sex, getting pregnant. Hmm. Now, because of POXO, she's scared to scared. come. Hmm. 
Mm. Now, all over the world, and in India, especially with POXO, they have said that if a girl comes to a hospital with a pregnancy mm. and she needs health care, it can be given to her. Yeah. Now, the doctor can give the report to the police because mm. it's mandatory reporting. All right. But they don't need to give the name of the person. Okay. And the police can file an FIR, but the child herself is not harassed in any way, mm -hmm. does not ever need to go to the police station. POXO says it no protects. child should go to the police station. It yeah. has very child-friendly procedures brought yeah. in. So even in the special court, like there is a special court for children, which is kept empty. All right. So when the child gives a deposition, mm. uh, nobody else is there. Like normally yeah. you see courts, yeah. they are full, full of, of people, people and everybody is watching and things. Mm -hmm. That is not there. Mm. It's uh, in-camera proceedings. Yeah. Plus, they look at the identity of the child. Yeah. So, in no way can the identity in the media, mm. and even in the media, like sometimes the media says, we didn't give the name of the child. Mm. But they've said, in so-and-so school, yeah. or in so-and-so village. Yeah. And that often gives the, you know, the sort of identification comes out with that. Yeah. So, they are not meant to do any of those. So, no way can the identification of right. the child or the family come out. Yeah, that's where the misconception happens, no? Of people, of many cases going under, under unreported, unreported because they're scared of coming yes. out. It's just maybe the names might come up. Or, and I think there's a provision under POXO that helps protect the identity of the victim. Yes. Section 23 says that if anybody lets out the, uh, uh, the ID of the... Um, uh, mm -hmm. This thing of the uh, child yeah. who has been uh, molested, yeah. uh, they can be punished. All right. Even media, newspapers, mm -hmm. TV, mm -hmm. they can be also caught for having yeah. brought out the name of the yeah. person. So you were mentioning about uh, teenage pregnancy and how if a, a child below the age of 18 gets pregnant, we have a lot of, like I said, even then there's a lot of uh, reluctance from the side of the family, those who do know about the act, POXO, they are scared to go to the hospitals and it leads to cases of, you know, maternal mortality rate and we've spoken about this so many times before, these uh, teenage pregnancy leads to maternal mortality rate, that's because they don't avail healthcare facilities because yes. they're scared that they might go. There are two areas, one yeah. is that they're scared of the law yeah. because they feel that uh, when it comes up and unfortunately even in the system that we have, the criminal justice system yeah. is trying very hard to adhere to POXO guidelines. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the child doesn't need to go to the police of police station. Yeah. The, somebody can go and complain and the police person comes in mufti. Okay. That means they don't wear a uniform and they talk to the child. Okay. If it is a girl child who has been molested, mm -hmm. then uh, not less than a rank of sub-inspector has to interview okay. the child. All right. And it has to be a lady, mm -hmm. police official, mm -hmm. not a male. Okay. If it is a boy, it could be either a male or a female. Yeah. So, these are certain provisions brought in. Yeah. And the child is not to be interviewed again and again. And okay. when the child is interviewed, the person, a person that the child trusts has to be with the child at all times. Okay. Like the police person or the doctor cannot say, please leave, go outside, I want to talk to the yeah. child alone. Hmm. The only time we may do it is if we suspect that the person who has come with the child yes. is the accused. Okay. In that case, when we realize that the child is very scared yeah, yeah. of the person, we may hmm. say, please wait over there. I'd like mm. to talk to the child in confidence. Mm. But even there, we never send them out of the room. We ask them to be in a place where they can see us, but okay. they may not be able to hear us. All right. Okay. So, you know, a, a lot of uh, maybe these victims of uh, sexual harassment, these children that are, you know, harassed or maybe have gone through any any kind of sexual abuse, they, most of them, like you said, if they are not the accused, they are not the possible suspects, it, is, it could just be because they, are not, they haven't told their parents or they're scared to open up, right? So what kind right. of um, message would you like to give to parents and so that we identify they are, if there's something wrong, if, if my child is being sexually uh, offended or there's, she's been harassed or something is going on. So how do we identify these signs and how can we as parents create an open and safe space for our children to come up to us? So, child sexual abuse is a very scary topic yeah. to talk about. Yeah. So, the way we talk about it hmm. is before that, which yeah. means we start talking about the normal body. Yeah. So, from the time my child is two, two and a half, three years, mm -hmm. and I'm bathing the child, you know, we keep saying, brush your hair, yeah. uh, you know, clean your teeth, mm -hmm. wash your hands. Mm -hmm. So, these are words. So, if someone pulls my hair, I can say, Oh, the word hair, my mother, father, grandmother, mm. everybody uses it. Yeah. So I can say somebody pulled my hair. Yeah. But my private parts are never spoken about. Yeah. So I don't know how to mm. say the word yeah. to tell my parents somebody is touching me there. Yeah. So when parents themselves start saying, you know, 
your penis, your mm. vagina, mm. Uh, your private parts. Private parts itself is a little confusing yeah. to children because every part of my body is private. You can't yeah. pull my cheek. That's also private to me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So every part of my body is private mm. to me. But there are some parts I allow people close to me to touch mm. and others I don't allow. Yeah. So when our children are small, five, six or even younger, we mm. start saying, okay, I'm going to give you a bath. Okay. But certain parts of your body are very sensitive. Mm. So that's your face. So your eyes, nose, ears, mm. mouth. See, if I put soap, you cry. Yeah. So I'm going to put soap on your hand. You wash your face yeah. yourself. Yeah. And then same, I'll say, this is where things go into your mm. body. Mm. There are some places where things come out of your body. You pass susu, so you do potty. Yeah. So in those places, I'll give you soap on your hands. You wash yourself. Okay. I will pour the water. Mm. Because without your permission, nobody touches you here. All right. And so you start creating. So you say buttocks and all these are just spaces which are more private than other parts. Yeah. And so we take care of them. Oh, that's a very nice approach. You start, like you, you rightfully said that we should start before it happens. Then you know, wait for it, yeah. to, wait for the time to come. And okay, now you tell the kid that th this is not where you're supposed to be touched. Or uh, most of the cases of you know, poxo, and it's even more difficult for children to open up because they're scared. Because most of the cases, it's people we know. Right. It's not because if we speak about children who are under the age of 18, let's say 15, 16, they are not mo hanging out with strangers or they are not going to public places by themselves. And we find most of the cases of Boxo are also the people they know very closely to and they feel like it's okay if this person touches me. They, it goes unnoticed or, you know, the child doesn't, it's not even uh, aware that, it's this, that this is happening, it's wrong. So actually what you're saying is hmm. such a crux of the problem of child sexual abuse. Yes. As a parent, if I have small children, hmm. I won't leave them alone in the market. I yeah. will always hold them in my yeah. hand. Even if I go to a public bathroom, I take them in with yeah. me. Yeah. I will not leave them in a stranger's house. Mm -mm. But they run in and out of my brother's yeah. house, my parents' home, mm -mm. my neighbor's home. Mm -mm. And because I as an adult have would not think of sexually abusing a child, yeah. I presume that other elders well, around the are the same. same. Mm. So it's very difficult to protect your child from sexual abuse mm -hmm. unless we listen to children. Yeah. Now, how do I listen to a child and how does my child learn to talk about child sexual abuse mm -hmm. if I don't listen on other things? Mm -hmm. For example, I tell my child, drink your milk. And he says, I don't like it. It makes me feel pukey. Yeah. I'm like, no, no, drink your milk. <laughs> So I'm not listening. Yeah. Now, if I listen, because 30% of Indians are lactose intolerant. Okay. So if I listen and said, okay, if you don't like drinking milk, don't drink it. Would you like to have something else which yes. gives you calcium? Yeah. Like chicken or meat or egg. Mm. And if he says yes, I'd give him that. Okay. So the child says, when I tell my mother or father something, they mm. listen to me. Okay. So if my child says, uh, this is very hot, don't be silly, don't make a fuss, eat it. Yeah. They realize, I can't trust my own thoughts. My parents know better. Yeah. So when a person touches me, I'm not sure whether it's okay, but my parents like this person mm. or they trust this person. So maybe I don't know anything. Mm -mm. This person knows it better. Yeah. And in fact, with child sexual abuse, what we found, like I was abused when I was about five and a half or six. And strangely enough, my husband also told me after 25 years of marriage okay. that he had been abused when he was small too, around the same age, five, six, because, mm. and both of us realized that we didn't even know what it was happening. Yeah. It was only when we were 10, 12, 14, yeah. and we started understanding about mm. romance and sex and things mm. like that. Even then we weren't very clear about mm. what sex was because, you know, we didn't yeah. watch movies and mm. things. That's when we realized that this is what has happened, Yeah. right? So I also want to tell people that sometimes it takes a lot of time to talk about it, mm -mm. but to always realize that it need not affect your life. Mm. Speak about it and understand that your body is yours. Mm. If someone tried to trouble you, molest you, do something to you, that's their fault, their crime, yeah. but it doesn't make your body bad. Mm. It doesn't make your body in any way dirty. Mm. And as you grow up, you can still take care of your body because sometimes we find that if a person has been abused once, they tend to get abused again and again because they start feeling, maybe I'm a bad person. Yeah. Maybe this is happening to me because there's something wrong with me. Yeah. And what we maybe don't I'm realize, inviting inviting them to do it. Exactly. Maybe I shouldn't. There's something of the way I talk, talk or the yeah. way I smile or the mm. way I sit that has mm. caused this person to do this to me. Mm. If we only knew that a person who abuses abuses many children, mm. so it is never ever the child's fault, no matter how many times it happens. Yeah. 
So yeah, you're, you're right. I, that's really heart hitting when you when you say that. You know, a lot of us actually blame ourselves if cases like that happen. Maybe did did I invite this person to do this to me, or is it my fault? Or even after it d does happen, we go to it affects mentally, of course, right? It, how have you met? Uh, you know, with your dealing with these many cases, like how has this sexual abuse affected the minds of adolescents and teenagers? So what actually happens is, first of all, self-blame yeah. and a feeling of uh, being unworthy. Yeah. It creates low self-esteem. I mm. think the biggest issue is the silence, yeah. that I can't speak about it. Yeah. So for example, children may go through many unpleasant experiences. Mm. You know, I may lose a parent, yeah. my parents get, may get separated or yeah. divorced, yeah. or uh, there may be domestic violence at mm. home. Or my parents always love my brother or sister who's smarter than me or better looking yeah. or gets good marks and I'm, you know, a duffer in class maybe mm. or I don't look so good. Mm. So there are many areas where we are emotionally or physically abused. Parents hit us. Mm. That also comes as physical abuse. Yeah. So these things affect, but I can always talk about it. Like mm. I can talk to my husband or my friends and say, you know, you know, my parents used to fight a lot. It was very disturbing. Mm. Or, you know, when I was young, my dad passed away. Mm. I can speak about these things. Yeah. But sexual abuse, because adults don't talk about sexuality as mm. a normal process, mm. children can't talk. Yeah. So in mm. a way, the adult world has prevented children from mm. speaking out. Yeah. And that's why it's so important when mm. children ask any question about romance or mm. sex, we should give a simple answer appropriate mm. to the age of the child. So yeah. if a child is five or six mm. and they say, um, you know, why is auntie's tummy so big? You say she's having a baby. Yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, how will the baby come out or how did it come mm. in? Mm. Say when two people care for each other a lot, mm. a father and a mother, then they come very close and they have sex. You can have a pregnancy and the baby comes out hmm. and they'll say like where does the baby come out from yeah. and you see there's a place hmm. between the place where we pass urine and the place where we pass motion from which the baby comes out yeah it's a very plain simple thing I'm and sorry. if we don't make it very oh my gosh what a scary yeah. thing to say the child also says oh okay and they go off yeah they're not bothered because yeah. they didn't really want so much knowledge they yeah. were like fine this is yeah. okay but what happens is we are showing children you can hmm. ask any question yeah. And you will get an honest, truthful hmm. answer. Yeah, that's right. How do we go about to report and stand up for ourselves if, uh, you know, the cases of s sexual offence, not just the victims, of course, not just those going through it, but as adults, as parents, as guardians of those under the age of, you know, 18 or how can we stand up for them and how can we go about in helping build a safe environment and if it does happen, how can we protect it? protect them and how do we seek justice so you know sometimes i say that children get assaulted twice yeah once is when they get assaulted by the person and then mm. they come to their families and say this is what happened yeah. and everybody says what did you do mm. or keep quiet mm. you know that person is a very important person of our family mm. or a very important important person in the mm. village so we're not going to talk about it yeah and so the child is doubly betrayed because mm. the person who abused you was a person who is bad hmm. or someone who does not understand their own responsibilities for their own sexual hmm. feelings hmm. but their parents your family are the ones who are meant to protect you yeah. and they have not hmm. so the most important thing I want to tell families if your child ever complains hmm. about it or tells you about it please listen and say the first thing you say is thank you so much for trusting me for hmm. telling you hmm. and the second is I will do everything to keep you protected hmm. If we can just do that, because the yeah. child doesn't want, actually they don't want this police case and all yeah. the rest of it. What yeah. they want is, please believe me and please stop the abuse. Hmm. And that's what we're meant to do. So, what are the legal procedures of how to go about when we do, want, when we want to report a case of POXO maybe? So, the first thing is we report to the closest police station. Okay. And it's important for us to tell the police station and the police have to file an FIR hmm. and a report. And then they have to conduct the interview. Yeah. Now, one of the things we tell the families with the child, and we tell the child also when the child yeah. comes to me is, suppose you were walking on the road and somebody pushed you, hmm. or somebody hit you and took away your bag. Yeah. 
we would go to the police. So, so this is the same thing. Yeah. It's not something to be ashamed of. Yeah. It was a crime committed against you, just mm. like theft mm. or being beaten yeah. or hit or mm. something like that or being mugged. Yeah. So never feel uncomfortable about mm. reporting it. For the family also, we tell them, maintain the confidentiality. So mm. sometimes what families do is they call the whole family together and say, you know, this happened to my child, what do I do? Yeah. And the poor child has to keep repeating it to everybody. Yeah. Don't do that. Call one or two people who you feel are very strongly with you with the child mm. and tell them about it mm. in a confidential manner. Don't make the child speak about it again and mm. again. Like we've had cases where in a village some boys gang raped a girl. Okay. You know the whole village, Dorbar sat down and they discussed it and told the child tell us and the parents of the boys were saying, this is all lies, how can this happen? Mm. You know, in this way, we ensure that any other girl who has faced anything will never complain. Yeah. And boys so don't complain at all, mm. though they face as much molestation. Yeah. So the parents should maintain confidentiality. Tell only those adults in your family who you know you can mm. trust to support you. Mm. Go to the police station, don't take the child to the police yeah. station. Go and file the FIR. The police will come where you're comfortable. If you're mm. okay for them to come to the uh, house, they can come to the house. They will not come in uniform. Mm. If you're not comfortable for them to the, come to the house, mm. you can ask them to meet you at the district hospital, yeah. child welfare committee. There mm. are places where and every uh, district has a child protection officer. All right. They can go to the child protection officer and say, can you give us a place where the child can be interviewed, which is safe and comfortable and which is, mm. uh, you know, confidential. All right. So they can interview the child there. Then the child will have to go for a medical examination. Mm. Uh, most doctors in the government system have been trained how to mm. do an examination. All right. So they make the child comfortable. As far as possible, they never uh, examine a child in a casualty or in an OPD where All there right. are a lot of people. Okay. We always say that take them to a separate room where it's quiet mm. and always have the person the child trusts, mm. mother, father, grandmother, or sometimes the child has been rescued on the street. Mm. There is a, somebody with the child. There is always someone with the child. The ch okay. child is never examined alone. All right. Then the doctor will be there, a nurse will be hmm. there. We take consent from the child. We explain to the child. Yeah. So like I'll say, oh, when you fell down from a cycle, you got hurt, right? Mm -hmm. So you came for a checkup. This is mm -hmm. the same way. Somebody yeah. has hurt you. Yeah. So I'm going to do a checkup for you and I will give you medicine so mm -hmm. that if you have any pain, you will feel better. Yeah. And soon you'll heal. Like just yeah. when you fell down from a cycle and mm -hmm. you're fine now, mm -hmm. you will be fine. But I would like to write the report. Are you okay? Okay. And we also tell the child at any point, mm. if you say, I don't want to be examined mm. or please stop, I'm feeling uncomfortable, mm. we immediately stop. Because yeah. the child here mm. is a person we need to take care of. Yeah. So speaking of just reporting also, it's very nerve wracking, just not for, just for the child, forget the child, even for the parents, they're scared to go through all the legal procedures of, oh, I'm going to have to go to court and it's going to cost me a lot of money and the whole world is going to find out about this. and people will talk so a lot of cases go unreported and yes. speaking of uh, evidence yes so when it comes to you know proving or if these these cases were to go about uh, in hearing so how do they go about gathering the evidence or how would one suppose if it happened should is it uh, wise to wait or to keep quiet or you know, wait for a few weeks or so. Like, how will we go about if we find out, okay, my child has come to me and told me that this, that has happened. How do I go forward from there? So, you know, originally cases could take 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Okay. What POXO has said that as far as possible, the judgment should come within one year. All right. Because they also realize that children can't give evidence after three years, five yeah. years. And one of the ways the accused try to... Mm trip the system mm -hmm. is by going on taking they get a good defense lawyer who mm. keeps postponing the case yeah. three months six mm. months seven months and they ask for another date and it is the wisdom of the judge to say okay. no this is a child case and poxo says i have to give an That's thing right. within so unless there is an extremely valid reason they don't keep okay. giving delayed dates yeah. that's one second thing is when the abuse has occurred it's better to do the examination as soon as possible yeah within the next um, 48 to 72 hours okay. so that we can get evidence. All right. Because as we know, the body heals. Yeah. Right. So that's one. The other thing is that uh, the, sometimes there are no marks. Yeah. There is no evidence. Yeah. And sexual abuse is a secret crime, mm. a private crime. That yeah. means there's only the accused and the child. No. There are no witnesses. Mm. So basically the accused is saying, I didn't do it. And the child is saying, yes, he did it. Mm. But it's, 
extremely, extremely, extremely unlikely, I would probably say not likely at all that a child would ever falsely report abuse yeah. because most children don't even know what it is, mm. right? So for them to be able to say this has happened, we believe them. Mm. Then there is what the police call as circumstantial evidence. So one right. is evidence which is collected by the doctor yeah. if there's a mm. harm. Okay. But the second evidence is also circumstantial. Like All this right. person was alone with the child here. Okay. Like a particular mm. teacher would call children alone into In their the room. Classrooms. So we know that's happening. Mm. Or the per child was alone at home and this person had visited and others mm. say, yes, we saw him walking down that way. Okay. Like that. So these are ways we can All sort right. of realize that circumstantial evidence shows us. Okay. Another thing which has come up in evidence is if a child has started complaining about uh, mental depression, child has stopped going to school, okay. child has started having anger outbursts mm. or the child has stopped talking to people, has become very quiet, all these things tell okay. us and are taken as evidence. Mm. So sometimes a child is sent for psychological assessment to see okay. and the child sometimes times talks to the psychologist and okay. says this is what happened to me okay. and that also is taken as evidence. Okay, all right. So, as parents, you know, like you said, we said earlier, of course, when sometimes even if we do try to talk to our child, sometimes they're scared to open up. So, how would one recognize the signs that, you know, as a child, if I, what, are, what are the differences that we might uh, see in a child if they were sexually offense? So, once what happens is sometimes if it's in the house, mm. it's a person who comes to the house, maybe yeah. a friend of the family, mm. an aunt or uncle mm. or older cousin. Mm the child will start avoiding that person okay. and the child will say, I don't want to go to that person's house okay. or, oh, is that person coming? Mm. And they'll make a face okay. and then we can say, what, uh, what happened? Mm. And sometimes they'll say, oh, that person gives two chocolates mm. to my sister but never gives me any chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> so we know it's something, you know, yeah. benign. But sometimes they'll say, they always try to kiss me and I don't like it. Okay. You know, things yeah. like that. So you always listen to the child and keep mm. an eye out for the child. Mm. The another thing is that the child may stop going to school, mm. their grades may start falling. Yeah. Sometimes in school if they are being abused or mm. on the way to school, yeah. they'll, I don't want to go to school, mm. I don't like going to school. And there may be many reasons, mm. it's not just sexual abuse, yeah. they may be being bullied in school yeah. and that also can cause a lot of harm. Yeah. Or there may be somebody who is like, you know, uh, teasing them yeah. or saying something to them mm. or stuff like that. Mm. So important thing is instead of saying, why don't you want to go to school, mm. go to school. Mm. Or don't be stupid. Why are you sitting alone in your room? Come mm. out and talk to people. Mm. We say, what happened? Mm. You don't want to speak to them? No, I don't like them. Why? They always compare me to everybody. Okay, okay that's fine. I will tell them. But next time they do, I will speak out. Mm. So for parents to speak out, even though it's difficult for yeah. us, we are trained to respect our elders. Yeah. Yeah. So if I have an elder in my family who's mm. always telling my child, oh, sit properly. Mm. Why are you dressing like this? Look yeah. at your hair. It's so long. Mm. I'll say, no. This is the way they express themselves. Mm. I'm fine with the way my child dresses. Mm. It's okay. Yeah. So I'm standing for my child. And yeah. when my child realizes I stand for them, mm. they will ask and come and tell me if they have a problem. All right. So what about cases of where the both the boy and the girl who gets into a relationship, a physical relationship, but cons it's consensual and they're both under 18? What? So basically the issue is, as we come down with teenage mm. pregnancies, yeah. is the mind gets mature 20 to 24. Yeah. So while the system nowadays is having a boyfriend or yeah. a girlfriend <laughs> is really. has become yeah. like normal, yeah. normalized. Yeah. So that a person who doesn't have a girlfriend or boyfriend yeah. feels there's something wrong with them. You know, mm. why don't I have somebody? <laughs> yeah. You know. So there, we understand that romance mm. happens. Mm. You know, you hold hands, you move around. Mm. But what sometimes happens is our sexual feelings overtake us yeah. and we end up having sex when we didn't mean to. Yeah. Sometimes boys have said that they wanted, they had sex because their friends teased them yeah. and said, oh, you don't know what it's like mm. or, you know, you're just a virgin and, mm. you know, yeah, comments yeah. like that. Yeah. And I think that's where the self-esteem is important mm. to talk to about mm. children that you don't have to do anything mm. just because your friends are teasing you about it. Say, mm. I don't want to do it now. That's, that's my issue. Mm. I would like to wait. Hmm. So girls also may say, I would like to wait hmm. or you take precautions to hmm. ensure that you don't have a problem, yeah. you know, things like that. So these are ways and even sometimes in a relationship, one of the partners wants to have sex, the okay. other doesn't. Hmm. And they may say, oh, if you don't want to have sex, that means you don't love me. Yeah. And the person can be able to say, hey, listen, if you love me, you won't force me to do something I don't want. Hmm. So negotiating skills are important yeah. to understand that, you know, you have your whole life. Hmm to be in relationships. Yeah. 
So you could wait a little longer if you wanted to. Yeah. And take care of yourself and realize that a person who's forcing you to do something you don't want to do hmm. may not be somebody who has your best interests in yeah. mind. So how can how can we create a safer environment for for teenagers, for adolescents out there watching or children who are watching? How can we create a safer environment for them to make sure that cases of sexual abuse doesn't happen? So the most important way is to help giving children vocabulary about sexual abuse, mm -hmm. like being touched inappropriately. Yeah. We say touched inappropriately. What does it mean to a mm -hmm. child? Yeah. Right? So if we can speak to children about what is okay and what is not yeah. okay, telling them if someone touches you in a way you don't like, you mm -hmm. can say no. Mm -hmm. if, you know, and it starts from an aunt pinching your cheeks and mm -hmm. you're like, I don't like it. And mm -hmm. the child can tell the aunt yeah. and the parent says, yes, it's uncomfortable and painful. Mm -hmm. So constantly telling the child that they are important mm. and they have the right to make decisions about their own body. Mm. So whether it's eating food, whether it's being touched, whether a child says, I don't want to have a bath with my siblings, mm. I want to have it on my own, mm. like they're eight or nine and All their right. sense of privacy is coming mm. in. We say, yes, mm. that's fine. Mm. Are people sitting and watching children having a bath? Like, no, it's fine. Children mm. have deserve privacy too. Yeah. Let them finish having a bath. Don't stand around watching them. Mm. So these are ways that children also realize that they have the right to say no, mm. that helps them. And I think listening to children, mm. having a little time every day. And I find mm. sometimes with my children, when they were small, yeah. at night when I would put them to bed mm. and cover them up and put off the light, mm. then they would say, Mama, I want to tell you something. Mm. Because they feel scared to talk to you when mm. the lights are on, but when the lights are off, yeah. they feel more comfortable. Yeah. So having maybe once or twice a week, a parent mm. just talks to a child and mm. say, how's things in school? Mm. What's worrying you is, yeah. are you mm. com uncomfortable of anything? And the yeah. child says, no, I'm fine. Mm. That's it. But the child yeah. knows, my parents ask me. Yeah. What about as educators? What can educators do to contribute to make sure that there's a safer environment for, for adolescents? So one of it is breaking the silence around mm. sexuality. Because yeah. sexuality education doesn't just mean safe sex. Yeah. Sexuality education is teaching people that they have the right of autonomy over their own body. Mm that they have the right to feel comfortable in their own body. Like yeah. telling people, you're too fat, you're too thin, your hair is like this. Mm. Are ways we disrespect other people. Mm. So not telling children things mm. like that. And so as adults, sexuality education in schools, respect for children. Mm. Sometimes children have gender confusion. Yeah. I'm a boy, I'm a girl. Mm. And I often tell young people, from of my children, friends, children mm. who have told me that. Yeah. I say, listen, by the time you're 20, 22, you will know exactly who you are. Hmm. So don't worry about it. Hmm. I respect you for who you are. Yeah. And whether you are a boy's body thinking you're a girl or hmm. your girl's body thinking you're a boy, doesn't matter to me because hmm. I respect you. Hmm. And that's how you, as adults, we can hmm. create a safe space for children. Yeah. Speaking with these kids, they have gotten, some of them, most haven't, but uh, in value education class, they've been taught the concept of consent, boundary, respect and all of that and it's very important we put emphasis on that so that the child understand this is this is the line, this is where I'm comfortable with and they learn how to stand up for themselves, right? So what about as a community, as a society, because we see a lot of uh, resentment when it comes to, you know, when we, when we go to a community leader, let's say, oh, this has happened in our, don't, don't tell anyone, don't report it, we will solve this amongst us so that it doesn't go out or there's no tarnish over the image of our town or for people yes. that, you know, there's a lot of cases of POXO going underreported because of that also, because the village authority or the, the, the authority in charge are not supportive. Shall I say? Yes. Hmm. And that is because they put the family or the village honor above the safety the, of a child. Yeah. And the moment you do that, you are destroying the children in your village. Hmm. So you must look at it as, suppose there was a person thieving things from different yeah. houses. Would we say, don't tell anybody, let them keep thieving. It's yeah. fine. Would we do that? If there was a person who would hit people on the head with a stick, yeah. would we say, no, no, he's a respected elder. He can keep hitting people on the head with a stick. <laughs> So why is sexual abuse separate yeah. from physical abuse, yeah. emotional abuse or theft? Yeah. It's just a crime committed against a child. Mm. And it has to be stood up mm. for and the person has to be mm. made responsible for their mm. uh, violation. Yeah. I won't disclose where I'm from, but uh, from where I come from, there's a lot of cases of teenage pregnancy and a lot of cases of, you know, above the age elder. of 18, elder, uh, they would 
get married to a girl very younger or they would be made to live together with an underage child and they would get pregnant and the village authority knows and they don't complain or they keep quiet about it so yes there have been cases of a mm. 38 40 year old yeah. man who's already married, married. maybe once or mm. twice and he's living in with a 16 year old yeah. or 17 year old girl yeah. and we only find out when she's pregnant mm -mm. so it's a little difficult because people have the right to their own relationships yeah but when we know that this person has fooled around with other women, hmm. we know that his uh, ability to take care of this person may not be right. Yeah. It's very late in the day to start talking. So hmm. if he has started talking in class 5, 6, 7 to hmm. girls and boys, yeah. that you may have sexual feelings, hmm. but there is a responsibility in how you express it. Hmm. Your sexual feelings can never violate another person's body yeah and 16 17 year olds we talk to them we mm. counsel them and we ask them mm. because we are only worried about oh get the father to the pregnancy you know like the child should be acknowledged mm. but we don't realize that a person who may have molested a girl though mm. they have done it in such a way we call it seduction mm. where she thinks she's in love with yeah. the person mm. but once they've trapped her they may continue to physically abuse, yeah. domestic violence, mm. all this comes in. Those are cases where definitely mm. the family should support the girl yeah. and say, listen, we will support you whatever you decide to do, mm. but you do not have to stay with the person and we will never force you to marry somebody unless mm. you mm. are clear that this is a person mm. who has respect for you, mm. whom you can trust yeah. and who has commitment to your relationship. Yeah. So how can we as a community, again, put more emphasis on this act and how can we strengthen the act? Strengthen the act. I think the impl uh, implementation can be strengthened when we have zero tolerance for any sort of abuse. Mm. So, boys who whistle at a girl when they're mm. walking past or someone who touches children a lot. Mm. These are things where we say, no, you yeah. don't touch children mm. because the child can't consent, yeah. right? So, hugging children, there is children need touch mm. and we need love and warmth mm. and hugging but from people the child trusts mm. the moment it's someone who doesn't mm. and the child says I don't like it you don't okay. like even when my sister came mm. with her son who was six years old mm. they came to visit us yeah. I hugged my sister and then I told my nephew may I give you a hug mm. and he said yes yeah. and then I hugged him mm. but I wouldn't automatically hug him yeah. Unless he came running to hug me, yeah. then I know that's a sort of consent being given. Yeah. But if a child is standing there and I'm going to hug them mm. and you know, you can mm. make out the child's not comfortable, mm. but I forcefully hug the child, mm. it's a violation. Yeah. Even so, though I love the child mm. and I have no intention to abuse. Yeah. We had spoken off camera when it comes to teenage pregnancy and there's the issue of abortion. Yes. And that is a very, what is your view on that? So the biggest issue actually what they have found worldwide is not my opinion so much as mm. it has been found uh, in Brazil, mm. Argentina, in African countries, mm. even countries where they try to uh, give abstinent mm. care, abstinence as a principle to principle. prevent teenage pregnancy. Yeah. Unfortunately, the sort of social media that is there mm. stimulates children to a sexual feelings mm. which they are emotionally and mentally not mature enough to handle. Yeah. So they are going to have uh, end up having sexual relationships and mm. teenage pregnancies will arise mm. because in our society we neither talk about contraception nor mm. do we talk about safe sex. Mm. So in a way we have created an unsafe sex for children, unsafe yeah. society, society for children. Mm. Because we neither talk about it but we allow pornography, mm. in, it's, pornography works because adults keep watching it. Yeah. So therefore, pornography is peddled everywhere mm. and children unfortunately get to see it. Mm. Now, when that happens, we can reduce that. That's mm. one. Mm. And the deaths which arise when a woman, girl gets pregnant yeah. and she is not, she was actually didn't want to get pregnant. Mm. So there's a case where she is in a relationship and she wants to have the baby with the mm. person. That's mm. a different issue. Okay. But if she has become pregnant through sexual assault or through... Um, coerced sex okay. or uh, sex which was not actually consensual, hmm. she has the right to go for termination of pregnancy. The okay. government of India has made the MTP Act okay. which was amended in 2021 mm -hmm. because we were getting cases of 
16, 14, 12 year old girls who have become pregnant, yeah. uh, you know, assaulted by family members. All right. And they didn't even know they were pregnant till about four months, three months. Mm -hmm. So they needed a termination because they are neither emotionally nor mm -hmm. mentally prepared to have mm -hmm. this pregnancy. So the government of India has done the MTP Act, which says up to 24 weeks of pregnancy, mm -hmm. every government hospital mm -hmm. has to mandatorily do a MTP in a safe okay. uh, manner for any child who asks for it, okay. provided a guardian signs. All right. If a girl is over 18 years, mm -hmm. she has the right to ask for a termination of pregnancy mm -hmm. and all government hospitals have to provide the services. Right. So that would be under how, what is the time duration for that? That is up to 24 weeks. 24 weeks, yes. okay. What are the kind of institutions that are there to help provide legal ad advice or legal services to such so, victims? Uh, very often victims may be from poor families. Yeah. So the government of India has, within the POXO rules, right. has also talked about some amount of compensation. Okay. So 5,000, 10,000 is given because sometimes uh, poor people have to travel a long way yeah. to come to the sessions court. Yeah. They yeah. have to give up a daily wages. Mm. So they get compensation from the special court for okay. that. There is a district legal services authority which gives a lawyer free of charge okay. to the family mm. to fight the case for them. Mm. There is a special public prosecutor who supports them. Okay. And then over and beyond that, there is compensation given hmm. from the government, from the Department of Women and Child or hmm. the Department of Social Welfare, which supports the child. Okay. If the child is pregnant and she cannot, it's too late to terminate the pregnancy, yeah. she will be taken care of and she will get free medical care from the government. Okay. There is also the State Commission for, for the Protection of Children, yeah. as well as Child Welfare Committees. Hmm. And there are various organizations, even mm. NGOs, which work in supporting the child who has gone through it, as mm. well as the family. Okay. Because as you said, the tr uh, criminal justice system is very mm. prolonged yeah. and it's a difficult journey. Yeah. And so there are some people called support persons. Okay. So one support person is assigned to a family right. who will be able to help the parents and the family coordinate with the mm. courts, with the doctors, mm. with the police stations, so that they're not troubled in any way. Why do you think that is you know, that is so difficult for us to implement these acts. What are the loopholes that are there that makes it very difficult for us to, you know, even for people to even come and report these cases of POXO? So one of the cases is, is it's, though it's almost, now it's more than 10 years since it came up, yeah. the act, uh, the many people are not aware, aware. of it. Hmm. And our judicial system is an adversarial system. Hmm. That means the defense lawyer and the public prosecutor have to fight and, ha hmm. you know, actually tear the witnesses apart yeah. to try mm. and get the, to prove who's mm. better. Yeah. <laughs> so actually the child gets lost in mm. that system. Mm. And there are certain governments, state governments, which have made laws and rules which support. Like for example, the defense lawyer can never ask the child questions directly. Okay. They have to write the questions, give it to the judge, yeah. and the judge asks the questions. This All prevents right. a bullying of the mm. child mm -hmm. witness. Okay. So there are certain ways they can be used. Okay. So, ma'am, what about teenagers out there watching, you know, they are, maybe they come from a family who are not maybe educated. They sometimes force their child or the child, due to circumstances, are forced to get into early marriage or early pregnancy. So, in cases like that, how would they go about in seeking help if they are forced, if they feel like they are trapped in a relationship or they are, there's intermarital rape, like also, right? So, how would they go about in seeking justice? So one of the things which has been happening in a lot of other states yeah. in the country is if a child is mm. being forced to get married at 16, 17 mm. because of poverty or mm. other reasons or because a child has got into a relationship and mm. they're forcing her to get married to this mm. person, they can complain to the child welfare protection officer yeah. and there are very strict rules now about mm. child marriage, prevention yeah. of child marriage. So they can talk about that mm. and there the counsellor comes, talks mm. to the parents mm and says that you may get the child married but only after the age of 18. Hmm. And one of the most important ways of preventing child marriage is hmm. schooling. All right. If you can ensure education up to class 12 for all children, hmm. the child marriage rate will drop. Yeah. In the cases of a child where she's already pregnant and she already has a baby and she has families who don't support her and same as from the, her in-laws, they don't support her as well. How would she go about, you know, she wouldn't be able, like, whoever it is in this situation wouldn't be able to complain thinking that what about how will I provide for my child if I do complain who would give me shelter how would I be how could I go look for a job so 
we had spoken about this off camera and you had mentioned a lot of these uh, NGOs and institutions out there that are available for such kind of women. So a Department of Social Welfare has a special uh, hmm. support system for women, young yeah. girls who have a small baby hmm. and they would like to get back to work. There yeah. are skilling systems where they can learn skills. Hmm. Uh, tailoring, they could continue with their yeah. education and things like that. Mm. And the government has to provide creches for children, yeah. where the children may be left in a safe place okay. for the day while the girl continues her education mm. or learns certain okay. skills so that she can be employed okay. and mm. she can support herself and her child. Uh, do you have any uh, concluding remarks you would like to give uh, to our viewers and listeners out there watching? Um, yes, I would like to say that if you have ever faced abuse, please understand that your life doesn't get damaged. Mm. You can live a beautiful, emotionally mature, happy life with a great family uh, and go ahead with your life. So never worry that it has scarred you forever. Mm. Please take help from counselors. Please take, take help from your friends and support them and be supported by people. Ask for support because it's always available. All right. So, all right. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much for for coming today and such an insightful conversation. I'm sure the viewers and listeners out there watching have gotten a lot of uh, insight and knowledge about this act and judging by what we saw today you know, uh, in our interview, most of the, even college goers don't know about the act and they do not know what it entails and what, what are the legal services that are provided for sexual abuse of children who, are gone, who have gone through sexual abuse and like right like that kid said they don't have a window and maybe this podcast and this episode gives them that window of opportunity for them to seek justice and thank you so much for shedding light on all the you know services that are available and knowledge and awareness on POXO and the cases that you have gone that you have been dealing with uh, I hope the viewers and listeners out there watching like this episode and if you have anything you would like us to talk about in our future episode, please comment down below. Uh, we will also be providing an anonymous submission whereby you can share your stories, anything you would like us to discuss about in our future episode. So please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe to our channel and head to our Instagram and follow us at Adolescence Unfiltered. With this, I think we will end today's discussion. Thank you so much, ma'am, and thank you to thank all you. of our viewers and listeners. Thank you so much. Thank you so thank much, ma'am.